I did something stupid in January. I bought some Netflix stock based on reports coming out from the shareholders meeting, only to find the stock had made its move overnight and I missed the gravy train. Worse, it dropped from its high of 580 down to 330. I decided to apply my gameplay method to check myself. Should I bail out and take the loss or should I hold? To make this work, I need Reed Hastings, CEO, to help me out. You'll be surprised by the value that I get for Netflix. In part one, we explored how Disney was fast approaching Netflix with a projected 2025 subscriber base of 202 million versus Netflix's 250 million. Reed Hastings has acknowledged as much, but the question remains, can Mr. Hastings return 30% year-on-year revenue growth? Can he maintain 19% operating margins? Said another way, can Netflix continue adding content and demanding higher prices, all this and controlling content costs in an exploding competitor environment. Mr. Hastings has developed a culture described at times as ruthless, yet transparent to the point of dysfunction. As an example, the famous keeper test where bosses are asked how hard they would fight to keep an employee not very hard, translates into a severance package. He certainly has deep experience with startup culture and tremendous knowledge of software and the technology space. Interestingly, he resigned his board role at Facebook in 2019, an important point that I'll return to shortly. I developed three gameplays to feed the model and for Netflix to meet these goals. The first is what historically brought Netflix to fame, namely the network effects shown in Circle One. This is the ability to create a loop effect where great content drives subscribers and feedback from subscriber data feeds improving content, a so-called virtuous circle. This is underpinned by the second gameplay, Circle 2, which is sensing engines. This is the ability to utilize the streams of subscriber data and to leverage it. Historically, Netflix was famous for this, especially in the pioneering crowdsourced machine learning algorithms. I only have myself and a few friends to sample, but my view is this capability has hit limits and is not improving that much. Netflix really needs to double down on their recommendation engine. My sense is they are spending much more resources on content production than on find and search capabilities right now. The third strategic gameplay is the most significant. And frankly, they are going to get beaten up by Disney and Amazon Prime. This is around building repeatable bundles. Disney is in the driver's seat here with parks, cruises, streaming and experiences and ESPN. I struggle to see how Netflix can bundle the same attractive packages and get some sort of lock-in effect. This is where the ingenuity of the Netflix team will come to play. Perhaps by leveraging his passion for education or links into Facebook. I think that network effects and sensing engines are well within the three to five year growth plan. I would love to see some more innovation come out of research and development. This may be happening already behind closed doors. Revenue growth over the last five years looked like this, with average growth around 30%. 
I think it's possible to see revenue growth return to the 30% levels over the next three to five years, given the receding pandemic and changing viewing habits from the COVID period. There is no doubt that content attention is being spread around a myriad of players and Netflix will need to produce top-notch content that viewers want. They are ideally placed to take advantage of the trove of data they have collected. My intrinsic valuation begins with determining the cost of capital, which is a weighted average of the cost of equity and the cost of debt components. Starting with the cost of equity, I use a US risk-free rate of 1.09% from around end January, early February. For equity risk premium, I take a breakdown of the regions where Netflix derives revenue so that I could prescribe a country risk premium. From this regional weighting, I derive a equity risk premium for the regions Netflix sells into of 5.77%. Continuing the cost of equity calculation, the next input is the business risk or beta. For beta, I use Damodoran's bottom-up beta for entertainment industries, which is 0.84. You need to lever this up using Netflix's market value, debt to equity. This is about 7.5%, and so levered beta used for cost of equity is 0.89%. Since the competitive space for Netflix is probably far broader than pure entertainment groups, I did a sanity check by running a competitor set of 90 plus companies like Apple, Disney, AT&T, Comcast, etc. The bottom up unlevered beta was 0.9 for the competitor set with a levered beta at 0.95 compared with the earlier 0.89, making it slightly more risky. I will bring both these numbers into the valuation. Back to the cost of capital calculation. First, we need the cost of equity, and the CAPM formula needs a risk rate beta and an equity risk premium, which I derived earlier. So that looks like 6.55% for the competitor set and 6.22% for the entertainment industry. Moving on to the cost of debt, Netflix is currently rated at BA3 by Moody's. This results in a spread of 2.77% on top of the risk-free rate, giving a cost of debt of 3.86%. It's worth mentioning that I think this rating will move down in the next few years since interest expenses are covered by operating income close to six times, which is typically a rating of A+, meaning cost of debt is more like 2.2%. I'll factor this into discounting cash flows and lower the cost of capital in later years. Cost of capital is the weighted ratio of cost of equity and after-tax cost of debt using market values of debt and equity. If I use the competitor set as a driver for bottom-up beta and the current Moody's rating, the cost of capital is 6.29%. So to discount my cash flows, I will begin with 6.29% and slowly drop it over 10 years to a terminal discount rate of 5.86%, which is based on that lower entertainment beta and lower cost of debt I projected in 10 years time. Now that we have the denominator sorted out, let's move to the numerator, which are the cash flow projections. Starting with revenue, I have kept revenue flat for this year at 24% growth, but then grow it at 30% for years two to five. Thereafter, I drop it in a straight line to 2% in the terminal year. So revenue forecasts looks like the table shown. 
current operating income is around 18.5%, and I selected 19% going forward. The current effective tax rate is about 14%, and I grow that to the U.S. marginal tax rate of 27% over 10 years. I also used a sales to capital ratio of 1.2 to derive reinvestment based on the entertainment industry average for sales to capital. From this, I get a free cash flow to firm, which I discount back at the cost of capital. For the terminal year after year 10, I assume a growth in perpetuity of 2%. I also assumed a steady state return on capital of 13%. This implies a reinvestment rate of 15%. Based on these assumptions, the value per share I get to is $627. I also ran a few scenarios shown in this table, and I modeled out a cautious view which had growth peaking at 27% rather than 30 and a little bit more investment hungry. On the other extreme, a better optimized content engine and this year's growth rate jumping to 30% rather than 24 yields a price of $658. There are a couple of in-between plays with a high capex model and then an efficient capex model. Mr. Hastings and team have a few levers, mainly around optimizing content spend and revenue growth. The problem is they don't have ancillary services to bundle together. I feel that there are a few acquisition or merger opportunities that would make sense. Either way, I feel the team will probably navigate them to these growth numbers that I have projected, meaning that right now I think Netflix is undervalued. Since investors are very focused on the big Disney subscriber growth, a few solid Netflix earnings calls should rectify that, having the price then moving to the value. Conclusion, I'm holding my Netflix, hoping for a price in the 620s before I sell hopefully within a three-month time frame. Don't forget to check out my complimentary video, which describes the Netflix strategic options in much more detail. Thank you for watching.